gender international, international rules forum, and uh, Metropolitan University. Uh, just speak on what attracts around the world and how important that is. So that is my that's my promo for tomorrow's talk. Um, now, as I and Carol entered the uh, department, uh, there was a TV screen and there was a poster uh, of today's talk with a picture of me and his all his dad. So in the description, I was asked to talk about you know, uh, my own experience as an exile leader. But some of you might know there's a bit of a you know uh, breaking news going on about Solidus uh, uh, you know, giving a kiss or a hug uh, to a boy. Um, and then you, know, you just need you just need leading news media um, as the covering this. Uh, as though it's a major world event, you know, for three days in a row. And this morning I read the rapper singer Cardi B tweeted with all the people in power, the men. They abuse children and so and so forth. And the next tweet was, "There you go." You know, and then she was sharing the the, the news about the kissing the boy. And that made me wonder, as I better say something about it. Um, partly because if you want to say something about the Islam, you better know you ask a person who he is. Uh, for Tibetans, he is everything. He is the manifestation. But if you want to share something like that, Cardi B, you know, and, and others, uh, you should know um, if you ask any Tibetan, they will say, absolutely, you saw this, has no intention, no motivation whatsoever you think, you allege that you saw this. But if you ask any Buddhist, also, they will come to the same conclusion. But generally, anyone who knows his saw this will say, He's a very funny person. He likes to crack jokes, make fun of you. For example, I have been with him for 10 years. I accompany him in many places. So, if you are a person, let's say, with a beard, he will hold your beard and pull it. <laughs> Don't you? Huh? And if you have a mustache like that, he will, you know, Play with your mustache, sometimes pull it down. I mean, you, you spend many minutes in the morning, right, making sure your mustache are, you pull it down, right? And it is also politically incorrect. If you have big nose, you say, oh, big nose, big nose. <laughs> um, and if you have big head, you say, big head, big head. Now, can you imagine the Solid is I'm going to meet the president of America, Barack Obama, at the White House? That's a serious stuff, right? And when you Solid meets Barack Obama, first thing he says is, oh, Big ear, big ear, big ear. <laughs> he plays with the ear, and Obama also says, Oh, you notice, huh? <laughs> so each time you, uh, he met with, uh, he used to joke, Oh, today also I played with this game. You know? So he's like that. Then if you're bald, that's it. You say, You look like me. <laughs> you rub your head and give you one, one back. Sometimes quite hard. You know? So he plays with everybody, and that's it. And then, um, Another story, this is politically correct. He was giving a talk at Harvard University, so he had to enter through a tunnel up the stairs. So in the tunnel, in the basement, there was an office as well. So we cleared the tunnel. So I was with the Solomon's and security. We were walking. And then one lady, you know, just opened her office cabin and came up with a fire, right? She was literally walking towards other direction. And as soon as he saw the dialogue, he saw this lady, he went running. Give her one back, you know. She was like, but she was who the hell picked me, you know. She turned around, she saw this Dalai Lama, you know. Everybody knew like, she was like surprise and also, you know, pleasant, you know, pleasant surprise. And then he gave her a big hug, right? And they all started laughing. And what did he say to her? You know, she, was <laughs> she laughed, you know, and then her husband walked together to the stairs and they walked, walked up the stairs and he said bye bye to her and she said bye bye to him. And she shares the story. Oh, my man, he gave me one rack and told me that. 
she doesn't, she was not offended. Why? Because you see the motivation and intention of his holiness was clear. Right? That's why people don't get offended. And uh, once I was in Washington DC uh, and met with uh, you know, the Senate majority in uh, Henry, uh, and then it's very difficult to get meetings. Okay? And there was this lady, woman who arranged this meeting, she was the advisor of Homeland Security. And, uh, uh, and then she helped me and I, was, I asked her why. And she said, you know, um, once you know, she, was, you know, she was pregnant and she went to a doctor and the test showed something negative. You know? And the doctor told her something's wrong with the baby. So can you imagine you're pregnant, ever to give birth, and the doctor says something is wrong with the baby. You get terrified, right? And then he saw that Zara was coming to Washington, D.C. So a lot of the people were lined up, and she was also lined up, and he saw this walk, you know? And then, you know, he, you know, he was shaking hands, and as, as uh, he saw her, and he pointed at her belly and said, pregnant, pregnant, teasing, you know, and rubbed her belly. Now, a monk, supposed to be, you know, rubbing woman's belly, doesn't sound that politically correct, right? But, when she was telling me the story, she was in tears, almost in tears. She said, you know, and then three days later, she went to the doctor, the doctor said, speak, nothing is wrong with you. She literally believed that because Dalai Lama touched her belly, he cured whatever the problem the baby had. Now, in one context, it's politically incorrect to touch a good belly as a monk, right? But in another context, she was very grateful. So, you know, we, we all must know that the Dalai Lama is very grateful. And then, you know, he just uh, made uh, quite a lot of things. Now, Kali B also said that that was, this is the context why there is a headline news about this audience, like all this powerful man abusing their power and things like that. Now, let me give you a story. No one knows this, okay, except for 10 people. No one knows the story. During COVID, we all were scared. Yes or no? One, more than a million people died in America, also in India. America was number one, India was number two. Ten or so many people have died so far especially the elders. And his Holiness Dalai Lama fits in that category. He was 85 and he was 86 years old. Yes, right? Very vulnerable. So I was coming to Washington, D.C. His first physician, Dr. Sitala, asked me, hey, go to the D.C. You know, the America is almost coming out with Pfizer vaccine. Can you arrange some for his Holiness? And I had a friend in at the White House and talked to him and he said, okay, it can be arranged. And he told the vaccine coordinator at the White House that in uh, November uh, and December of 2020. So, and then uh, they communicated to the US Embassy in Delhi, and I also knew the ambassador, Ken Jester, the staff, Graham. We talked, and he said, okay, you know, there will be uh, 100 vaccines, 100 shots for His Holiness, Dalai Lama, and people around. So I was very happy. I said, I do something. That a big Pfizer was allowed to be launched, right? And we thought we have to protect our treasure, the solid as the alarm, and only vaccine could have protected. And then the physician and the private secretary at the time goes to the solid and says, Your Highness, we are getting a vaccine for you. American government ready to give you a vaccine. You know what does the solid say? Said, said, Me? Why? 1.4 billion Indians, they're not getting vaccine. I see these local Indians here and there, they're not getting vaccine. Why should I get vaccine first? I wait till all the people in India get vaccine. Please tell the government of America that I don't want that vaccine. Can you imagine how many multi-millionaires and billionaires and rich and the powerful scramble to get vaccine for them and for their parents and you know, grandparents, yes, we all try. His always refused to take vaccine from American government. Now, after a few months, government of India launched AstraZeneca vaccines, which is 67% effective, okay? Pfizer is 93% effective. The Solent Dalam said, I'll take 60% effective, AstraZeneca. 
Then his private secretary and the physician again called me out and said, hey, can you ask the you know, health minister of India to keep this short <clears throat> at his residence? You know, so that he saw that it doesn't have to go to local hospital. Because COVID is infected through contacts. More people there are, more chances you will get COVID, right? So you have to prevent the soldiers that are 80, almost 86 years old from going to the local hospital. And then I, I talked to the health secretary and I talked to the health minister of Himachal for the Dr. State and the health secretary. They all agreed that they called the chief medical officer of Dharamsala and he also agreed. Then he called the physician, the private physician of the Solnes, and said, okay, we are ready to bring 15 shots to the Solnes residence. The Solnes and people surrounding will be given AstraZeneca shots tomorrow at his residence. And then he also, this is such a good news. And then they all approached the Solnes and said, Dollars, they are coming to give you a shot. He said, Why? Why should I take shot here? I should I should take shot like any other the local Indians. I'm going to go to the local hospital. And he went to the local hospital to take the shot. So if there's anyone in the world who will not use his popularity or power or influence, this is Solomon's now. COVID was life and death issue. Right? People were scrambling to take COVID shots. They saw that the issues. Pfizer. Or he, he went to the hospital. So, unless you know these stories about this hospital, he makes fun of everybody. Right? You just can't comment and say, my goodness, look at this picture. You know? So, yes, news media covered it. Okay. And yet, it did look odd. And as a Tibetan, and as a Buddhist, we would say, my God, that boy is so lucky. You know? This is how Tibetan view. He must be some special. He must be born with some special karma. And he's in a cultural system. Yes, in Western context, it might be politically incorrect. It's understandable. That's why Islam's Dalai Lama often issued an apology. Okay, if you have hurt someone, including the boy or anyone, I'm sorry. And it's time to move on. Why play this out? Now, if news media, if they're so concerned about children, yes, they should be concerned about children. What about one million Tibetan children who are sent to colonial boarding schools, who are uprooted from their nomadic and farming families, who are forced to send to boarding schools, where they're citizens, where they're taught only Chinese? What about that? One million Tibetan children. UN human rights experts have written a report and expressed their concern that one million Tibetans are getting sinicized, made into Chinese, forcibly, with no choice whatsoever. What about one million Tibetan children? Did you cover this news? No. But you play up these headlines. So I urge news media, including those celebrities who have no idea what they're talking about, let's move on. And that's deal with serious stuff, including human rights violations and in Xinjiang and other things. So with that, that's my brief comment on this issue because after listening to me, you might wonder, oh, what the hell is going on here? When you Google that might that news might pop up. But you must understand this all it is as a person. Anyone who has been close to him will Oh yeah, that's his story. By the way, my own experience, okay? So in 2011, as uh, Carol explained, I got elected. And uh, obviously I thought I'm the prime minister of Tibet without an exile. I should be very dignified and I should be learned and, you know, I should be serious. And his holiness was introducing me to the Tibetan public. And so it's all of <coughs> saying, yeah, he has good education. He has this, this, this degree from Harvard and all that. But his Tibetan is like a school kid. <laughs> I am a leader of the Tibetan people. I'm supposed to give speech in Tibetan. My oratory in Tibetan is supposed to be good, right? You know? Yes or no? <laughs> and he's always said, no, he is, he is Tibetan. Like, he's a school kid. And then everybody laughed. I was a bit embarrassed. I was so loud. That's his oldness for us. Okay, he's politically incorrect. You know, he says stuff, you know. But did I feel anything towards him? Not at all. He's sincere. He's clear. He's clean. You know? I have utter respect for him. Devotion towards him. 
So that's the solidness. So you know, I, I, I have many, many stories to share like that. But today's you know, because we have the half the poster is about the solidness, my photo is attached. I must you know, come and explain to him who um, he is. Um, so hopefully, media will take note of this and you know, write uh, this stuff as well.